Call the meeting of the South River Mayor and Council to order. Meeting number 19, dated 12-5-2022. Please read statement of notice. In compliance with Chapter 231 of Public Law of 1975, notice of this meeting to be held at the Criminal Justice Building, 61 Main Street, South River, or remotely via Zoom, has been published in the Home News Tribune on January 6, 2022, posted on the Municipal Building Bulletin Board, the Borough website, and the front door of the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Krenzel. Councilwoman Ballas. Here. Councilman Gindy. Here. Councilman Kurchensky. Here. Councilwoman Mira? Here. Councilman Oliveira? Here. Council President Siula? Here. Please rise with the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Okay, there are no proclamations, awards, presentations. Uh, we have to go into executive session. Yes. 2022-299, whereas Section 8 of Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, permits the exclusion of the general public from a meeting of the governing body under certain circumstances, and whereas the mayor and the council of the borough of South River are of the opinion such circumstances presently exist, now, therefore, be it and is hereby resolved by the mayor and the council of the borough of South River and the county of Middlesex of the state of New Jersey that the public be excluded upon the here and after specific subject matter and that such subject matter to be so discussed is as follows, contract negotiations. Be it further resolved that such record of the above discussion will be made public when confidentiality is no longer required. Motion. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilman Ballas. Yes. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Krachensky? Yes. Councilman Mira? Yes. Council, Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Okay, we will return. <laughs> Is there a motion to go back into session? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye, okay, agenda session, there's none. Move on to our second readings. Ordinance 2022-35, an ordinance of the Borough of South River, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 120 of the Borough Code of the Borough of South River, entitled Cannabis. Motion wave the full reading. Motion, uh, wave the full, uh, full reading. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. I'd like to open this up to the public. Anyone here from the public on first call, second call? Richard Byrne, 11 Bissett Place, South River. I've just my, my question is what's changing in this? It looks conspicuously like the existing the amount of licenses. The licenses. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. There, there's also one additional change. Um, the user tax was there is a user tax that's required by the statute that was not in the first one, so it's it's in this one. Anyone else from the public? First call, second call, third call? Motion to close public. Second. All in favor? Aye. Council, your pleasure. Motion to move. Second. Any further discussion? I just have a quick question for to date. We still don't have anyone complete or the one from the planning board is complete. That's complete. That I expect to have one for the next council meeting. Okay. Because that still goes here for approval anyway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call. Councilwoman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Kurchensky? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? Yes. Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Ordinance 2022-36, an ordinance of the Borough of South River, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, creating Chapter 201 of the Borough Code of the Borough of South River, entitled Liability Insurance Registry. Close full reading. Second. Motion and second. Way to full reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Open up to the public. First call. Okay, Richard Byrne, again. 11% place. Um, so this is a state mandate. Public Law 2022, Chapter 92. And, you know, another example of the legislature putting upon municipalities something that the state 
really shouldn't be doing. Um, like if I was writing this bill, I would have written it. All the insurance providers are required <laughs> to register and be um, um, regulated by the State Department of Banking and Insurance. State could have said, hey, all your commercial and res uh, rental policies, you have to report them to the state, and then the Department of Banking could have sent the data to each town, and then you could go against your list of businesses and, and just call the ones that aren't on the state's list, and you've got 90% of the work done, and it's easy to do if the state would want to do it that way. But, uh, uh, you know, are uh, convinced <coughs> that like uh, the people who make you know, GovPilot and all these systems, like this is something that they're going to have to build for every municipality, and they're going to get to charge for it. So uh, how much lobbying money do they spend on the legislature? Well, that's an event. An event. My, my question with this is, was, was this a model ordinance? Yeah, okay, well, I don't, the office I work for at the state, we do like the RSIS model ordinances come to us, and and construction model ordinances would come to us. So I, I didn't see this, but you know, my thought was, hey, could we do this since we already have business registration and we already have, thanks to the state, residential rental registration, could instead of coming up with a whole new system, just incorporate the liability certificate in those two processes and cover the whole works. I, this, this, this is a requirement of the state to write it this way, then <coughs> like, again, here's the state. Oh, they get out of the state mandate state pay by saying, well, you can charge a fee for it. So, all right, that, that, that was my thoughts on this. So, thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Anyone else from the public on first call, second call, third call? Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any other comments, questions? Uh, yes. My only concern with this was when I did look at this ordinance and I did realize that we do require all of our rental and businesses to already be registered, couldn't we just add upon our registration to also provide us with their insurance? They're doing that regardless. Um, I don't see why we have to charge another fee for something that we are already filing. Um, I just think it becomes more of a nuisance, especially to business owners who try to open and keep up and who are already required by their landlord to have insurance just to hand in a piece of paper to add another $50 fee to it. Um, can we, when we remind our businesses and our rentals to provide their information like they do to us regardless to just hand over also their insurance? Well, we have to create, I mean, we have to create this list. We have to create this list pursuant to this statute. Now, if you want to charge a fee for it, that is up to council, but it does, we have to actually create this list and do this work that was required under the statute. But we already have a list, correct? I, I understand what so you're The list saying. is already made. I understand what you're We're saying. We're just asking each rental and business owner to additionally give us their insurance information or their liability, right? That is, that is what, the, what the legislation requires. Okay. Do we have to charge a fee? You don't have to charge a fee. Um, but, I mean, there is additional work of the maintenance. That's, I believe, was there to cover the employees time. the time. So our borough clerk is who's going to be in charge of this? Correct? Yes. Who already has a list of our uh, businesses and rental units, correct? Hmm. No, the business, the business ones are not every business in town, the registered mercantile license. Some are grandfathered before we had a mercantile license. And all the rental units know because um, it's only the ones that have a CO. Uh, that we have rentals for anything that was before we started doing that that haven't changed we don't have them we have an ordinance that requires every rental to be registered within the borough so that we have the owner's information we have that I don't know I'm just trying to 
alleviate yet again our businesses from having to pay another fee. And I know it was told that we can't divide businesses with rental units, that if we're gonna charge a fee, we have to charge a fee for all. So I am asking the council, are we going to burden our businesses once again with only having to hand in our, their paper of liability of insurance or can we waive the fee? <clears throat> Yeah. <clears throat> that is my question to council. Uh, my opinion is cover the fee of or the, the time that it's our borough employees are working to do this and why put the burden on the residents because we're trying to do something with the businesses. Annually though? It's still the same thing. If they gotta file something every be year. One paper. No. Along with their file that we already have. I'm trying to look to be a little business friendly. Okay. So. I mean, initially what you could do is you could adopt the ordinance and then you could revisit it after we figure out how much work it actually entails. I mean, this is new. It's new to everybody. It's new to everybody in state. Um, so what you could do is you could adopt the ordinance because we have to adopt the ordinance. And then if it turns out that it is it does not take a lot of time and it does not cost the borough a lot of resources, you can revisit the fee that you charge. And then we could just waive it. You could either waive it, it or you could revisit okay. it, you could lower it, it. Yeah. We, could, we would have a better idea as to what it will take. <clears throat> uh, that's you, you could make an initial fee and then every year after that, if there are no changes, you could make it no fee. If there are changes, you can make a slight fee. Could we also amend the ordinance to be a one-time fee? Because you're looking at businesses, you know, that are here for over 20 plus years will now have to pay an additional $50 every year to hand you a paper of their liability insurance that they already have. But again, we have to pass this and then we can always make the we change later. Well, I'm asking if yeah. we can make the amendment today. That's what I'm asking. Well, if you you make the amendment today then well, you have to it's a small reading. amendment no that would be that would be a substantial change that would convert this into first reading um, again I my recommendation because this is required is that we adopt it and then we revisit it but if if the will of council is to make an amendment today that would convert this in whatever amendment that you vote on would convert this into first reading and then it would be second reading would be at your next meeting which is still in December, so so we're okay. It doesn't die with the changing of the year. We have to republish. We, we would have to republish. Mm -hmm. yes. republish. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think we should do it this way, and then revisit and see what we can cut. Yep. See what happens at that point. Yep. Okay. okay. Any other comments? Hearing none. Um, motion. Motion. A motion Second. on the floor. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Kurchensky? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? No. Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Ordinance 2022-37, ordinance authorizing various federal housing and community development grant improvements and equipment located in the borough of South River in the county of Middlesex, New Jersey. We have full reading. Second. We have a motion and a second to waive the full reading. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This time I'd like to open up to the public on first call, second call, third call. Motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any discussion? Hearing none, motion? Motion to move consent second. resolution 2022 37. Second. Motion and a second on the floor. Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Krajinski? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? Yes. Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Okay, moving on to ordinances by first reading by title only. 
Okay, ordinance 2022-38, bond ordinance providing for various water utility improvements and equipment acquisitions, appropriating $500,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $475,000 bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost thereof, authorized in and by the borough of South River and the county of Middlesex, New Jersey. I'll move that the council pass ordinance 2022-38 on its first reading by title only and that the clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by law with the second reading and a public hearing to be held at the meeting on December 19th, 2022 at 7 p.m. by the ways of electronic teleconference or in the council chambers of the criminal justice building at 61 Main SA 40A colon 12-13B and NJSA 40A colon 12-13.2. I'll move that the council pass ordinance 2022-39 on its first reading by title only at the clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by the law with the second reading and a public hearing to be held at the meeting on December 19th, 2022 at 7 p.m. by the ways of electronic <coughs> teleconference or in the council chambers of the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Second. We have a motion and second. Roll call. Councilwoman Ballas. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Krachensky? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? Yes. Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. 2022-40, an ordinance of the Borough of South River, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 22 of the Borough Code of the Borough of South River, entitled Boards, Commissions, and Authorities. I move that the Council pass Ordinance 2022-40 on its first reading by title only at that that the clerk be authorized to publish the same as required by the law with second reading and public hearing to be held at the meeting on December 19th, 2022 at 7 p.m. by ways of electronic teleconference or in the council chambers of the Criminal Justice Building at 61 Main Street, South River, New Jersey. Second. A motion and a second. Councilwoman Ballas? Yes. Councilman Gindy? Yes. Councilman Grachensky? Yes. Councilwoman Mira? Yes. Councilman Oliveira? Yes. Council President Siula? Yes. Okay, moving on to reports. Start with Mr. Koch. Good evening, everyone, and thank you. The 2020 and 2021 roadway improvements, we really only have the punch list left. They didn't, they didn't come back and do it this fall. It's too cold now, so I think it's going to wait till the spring, and uh, if they don't show up promptly, then we'll decide what the appropriate action is. Uh, 2022 roadway improvements, the contractor came out and did the work at the municipal building. Uh, I think that looks good. Depending upon the weather, they may come in December, uh, a, little, a little later in December, and do some of the concrete work and maybe some of the utility upgrades. They have a, a contractor that's going to do the hydrants and valves. The 2023 local aid program, the borough received a $681,405 grant. I issued a letter concerning that, so when you're ready, you can move forward with that. The substation, I contacted High Energy today. This was the uh, end of the period, like the time frame for the delivery of the SCADA system, though it is not there in their hands yet, but they're hoping you know, maybe next week or two to receive that and then they will begin work on that. And well number two replacement, I have it under that, but it's the air gap and the backflow preventer. Uh, there's a resolution on your agenda tonight for an award. And if you take that action, then I will get the contracts prepared <coughs> and get that moving promptly. And that is it. Any okay, questions? any questions for Mr. Koch? Hearing I do, none? Bruce. Yes. Um, <coughs> Uh, this is for you and also for the council. Uh, since we have our 2023 road program uh, started, I'm going to once again plead for additionally adding the issues that we continue to have on Prentice Avenue with Olcheski. It's getting cold. It's going to start freezing like it has been. God forbid there ha be an ac excuse me an accident in that intersection, in that stop area with a child or with a car, uh, it's getting worse. So I know, Bruce, you looked at it before. Mm -hmm. I'm asking council once again, can we add it to a road program? Something needs to be done there. It's freezing and somebody's going to get hurt. 
Can you add it? Yeah, we got it. I think it's up to the council. This yeah, is that's me. the council's will if they wanted to fund it separately and to do that. Do we have some kind of a figure on what it would cost? The last time I issued a letter was around 200000 as I recall. What I'd like to see is what... You're not going to take action on this tonight, right? Because no. you've got some time before you need, money. You need to get funding in place. Sure. So what I'd like to do is just look at the limits of what was in here versus that and then get back to you, okay? okay. Sounds and then good. for your next meeting, maybe you could have a better discussion with more information from me, okay? Okay. All right. Fine. Good. Really? Thank you. Everybody? Thank you. Okay. Any other questions for Mr. Koch? Hearing none, moving on. Mr. Zanka? Yep. Thank you, Council President. A uh, couple of resolutions on the agenda. First one is annual resolution we do, which is cancellation of balances less than $10. Second resolution was cancellation of one grant receivable and grant appropriation reserve. Another resolution is purchases through state contract and emergencies that over time this year exceed the bid threshold. These are purchases that we, if we have fire truck repairs for say $3,000, but they all add up and they uh, end up being over 17.5. So we memorialize it by resolution at the end of the year. Another resolution is for winter rec uh, program employees and two other things. One with the water bond ordinance, we did file the supplemental debt statement with the state and it's also on, on file with the borough clerk. So everything's in compliance to, to go to second reading. And then the borough just had their annual band sale on December 1st. We received a net interest rate of 3.133, which is excellent. But just to put it in perspective, last year at this time, we borrowed more money at 0.433. So it was less than half a percent. So with interest rates going up significantly this year, we're now at 3.133 percent. But bond council said everything, everyone else who sold in the state, only Princeton Borough was better than South River, which is very good. So we'll never beat Princeton Borough. <laughs> Princeton Borough will always beat us. So um, that's it. So it'll actually be on the 12-19 meeting, the award for this band sale. So, team, any questions for Mr. Zanga? I do, Mr. Zanga. That bond ordinance, was that the one we did for first reading? And what is included in that? It's for water, main, water mains, valves, and fire hydrants. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, moving on. See, Chief's not here. Where's Chief? Sure not here. Fire Chief. Chief Smith? Thank you, Council President. Currently, all trucks are in service. All state reports for November have been submitted on time. Annual fire pump testing for retention is scheduled for this week. According to Joseph Middlesex County Fire Academy, the release schedule from December to the first quarter of 2023. I want to personally thank the George Street Firehouse Ladies Auxiliary. They hosted a Thanksgiving food drive at Station 1. The food collector was able to provide meals for over 100 families, which is distributed through our food bank. On Thanksgiving, the members of the fire department assisted the South River Food Bank. Our members helped prepare and distribute dinner to over 150 residents. This event was located at the St. Peter's and Paul's Russian Orthodox Church. Three chiefs and an engine were on standby at the church and were able to respond to any calls while we volunteered. The Army will participate in annual tree lighting. This month, the George Street Firehouse Ladies Auxiliary will volunteer and assist the food bank with their annual toy drive. Chief selections will be rescheduled for Tuesday, December 20th, 2022, and will begin at 8 p.m. The council member will be required to attend. Chief of Department, First Assistant <coughs> Chief, Second assistant chief will be elected by membership. Please remember to change your batteries and your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. We are entering the holiday season. If you have a live tree in your residence, please remember to keep them well watered. Dates for annual Santa Run for Santa Claus Sunday have been posted on our Facebook page. Parents, please visit our page for information and drop off signs. I would like to recognize two members of our department recently completed the level one fire instructor certification class at the fire academy. Through a partnership program with Keene University and Middlesex County Fire Academy. I'd also recognize, like to recognize that four members recently completed the I-400 Incident Management class. They will now submit their certificates to become Level 3 Incident Command Managers. Again, we're a 100% volunteer organization. Recently, the following members reached huge milestones for volunteering. Carla Densky, Steve Kuzmak, Ed Adamski, John Rizicki, and Stan Rizicki. All 50 years of volunteering for the town. Eric Ops and Stan Justin also volunteered 25 years ago to be part of that. Thank you. And any questions for the chief? <laughs> Art? Uh, the only thing I have is uh, my latest report on the substation outages. We had a one-hour meeting with all parties involved.
PSNG to battery <coughs> storage, and we're still investigating the cause and how to make it prepared so it doesn't happen again. I hope to have a better report in the next meeting. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions for Art? Andrea? I just have one thing tonight. Um, the drop-in resolution is resolution 317, and the fire chief actually touched on it. It's just a resolution authorizing your fire department to hold its election of officers on the 20th. Okay. And that's thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any questions? Alyssa? I don't have anything. Nothing? No. Oh, <laughs> I have a quick question for Alyssa. Um, our mercantile licenses, I did see we had a new business open up. Is that the only one that we have? That I know of so far. Normally, Julie will be the ones that's handling okay. it. So, um, I didn't see an updated one. That's why I was asking. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can always um, ask her about it. But from what I know, I think that's the only one. Okay, any other questions? Okay, moving along, let's start with the governing body. Councilman Mayor. Uh, thank you, Council President. First, I'm gonna start up with the library. I wanna say that the library is hosting a logo contest for our centennial anniversary. That's 100 years that we've had the South River Library. <coughs> the contest is open to all South River residents in grades four through 12. Submissions must be in a 8 by 8 by 11 page format and can be either digital or printed. <coughs> and they can be turned in at the library at any library hours. Um, and the deadline for this is December 15th. So anybody interested in helping us out? Um, January, we will start celebrating our 100 years of having our South River Library. And uh, we also have a library employee who will be celebrating her 49th year as a borough employee at the library. So um, it'll be a year long celebration. So I hope any student that would like to um, uh, join this contest, please go on to the library website to get more information on that. Uh, our Shade Tree Commission had our last meeting last week. Uh, our chair is here, so I'm sure he'll be able to uh, give us some insight during public comment. But we do have um, some trees that will be planted in the springtime, and we're looking to do a rain garden with some grant money. So look to see for some um, insight, exciting stuff that will happen with the Environmental Commission, but that will be more in the spring of next year. And that's all I have for now. Okay, thank you. Councilman Krasinski? Thank you, Council President. Um, a few things. Uh, the South River Office on Aging will be closed on December 23rd through December 26th for the Christmas holiday. Um, there's the flea market is still looking for donations. Um, there is a list at the senior scoop to tell you what they'll what is acceptable and what is not. Um, and also the one last program, I believe, for the year would be the Christmas Mingle, which is on December 14th at 1230 at the Rio Mar. And the cost is $10 per member, and you should call the Office on Aging if you wish so they uh, uh, could receive your payment and uh, assure you of a seat. Um, aside from that, the DPW will be closed on December 24th. Uh, the last street cleanup will be on December 14th. The further cleanup will, <coughs> should be either in leaf bags or open containers on the Mondays with the regular uh, grass and uh, pickup. Um, also, the police department still has a few more days for cleaning out your closets and they want their shoes, your <laughs> usable shoes, so they can run some of their programs and everything, um, which would be the bike rodeo and a few other events that they hold. So if you have a pair of gently worn shoes, or new shoes and wish to donate them, there's, a, I believe, a collection bin out in the uh, foyer. And uh, with that, that's pretty much it. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Councilman Oliver. Good evening, everyone. So I'm gonna start off with Parks and Rec. For basketball this year, we had 140 uh, participants register. We're really excited. This is almost a 200% increase compared to last winter. Terry and Jessica are doing a phenomenal job just getting uh, kids registered and offering new programs. Wrestling, we were able to register 30 participants. 
Cheerleading is still open. We're expecting anywhere between 75 to 100 girls sign up for our competition cheer team, which again is outstanding considering it's a new program and it's something new that the uh, borough is offering. Our annual tree lighting ceremony is going to be this Friday, December 9th. Festivities will begin at 630 at the South River Museum. Uh, as Chief uh, mentioned, please come out. We'll have a visit from Santa Claus. Um, and even though it's not rec related, I do want to give the Pop Warner cheerleading program um, wish them good luck as they get ready to compete in the national tournament. I know Councilwoman Mara is going to be heading down to Florida. Terry, our rec coordinator, will also be down there in her role. So good luck to them. They're competing against teams across the nation, and it's a great cause, and they're representing South River. Uh, from Board of Ed perspective, they have a couple of events uh, that are going to be uh, coming up, they have breakfast with Santa on December 10th at the South River Middle School Cafeteria. Cost is $3. It's a great time. Um, they're going to have games, crafts, and of course, you'll be able to join some breakfast. Um, we have the Adopt a Family program has a couple things that are that are, that are happening. The hat, mitten, and scarf and sock tree um, items will be collected through Friday, December 16th. And a tree is located in the libra library, oh, sorry, in the lobby of the primary and elementary schools by the main office. They also have a food drive that is occurring through December 10th. Uh, again, a bin is located in the main entrance of each school. And then last but not least, the toy drive. Uh, a bin is located in the public, uh, the public library and the middle school and the high school. And last but not least, with the... Uh, Board of Ed, I want to just congratulate the Guidance Department and Matt Crouch. Uh, they hosted their first ever college fair today. It was awesome just to see the, uh, you know, the students participate and get to speak to prospective students, uh, prospective schools. If you have a child in the high school, make sure you ask them. Every college is adapting to potentially test optional, ask questions, get involved. Um, and I think, uh, again, kudos to everyone um, at the guidance department for putting this on. And that's all I have. Great, thank you. Councilwoman Bellis. All right, uh, the fifth annual Share a Smile Toy Drive is ongoing now through December 12th. Please donate new unwrapped toys for boys and girls ages newborn to 18 years old. The donated toys will be distributed through the South River Food Bank in partnership with the South River Fire Department and the George Street Firehouse Ladies Auxiliary. If you need arrangements for pickup, there are three people you can get in touch with. Shelley Lawson at 732-484-0407, Sonny Lawson at 732-484-9840, and <coughs> Artie Morris at 732-2070-663. Donations can also be dropped off at the Flores Family Home at 39 Virginia Street, the, all the bins are provided outside. The Rodriguez family at 35 Monticello Way and the South River Food Bank at 98 Jackson Street, Tuesday, 8.30 through 10 a.m. and 5.30 through 6.30 p.m. Monday and then uh, 8.30 to noon on Saturday. And that's it. Okay. Done. Thank you. <laughs> Councilman Gindy. On uh, behalf of DPW, uh, I know it's getting cold. It's uh, a lot of freezing points. Like uh, Ms. Miara said, one of our biggest issues is uh, ice accumulation. Please inform the DPW. Let them know. We already have three sites in, in uh, our eyesight that we're going to be going out and salting it up until we can finally resolve this problem. But until then, unless you tell us what's going on, we don't see it. Uh, as of for the planning board and the zoning board, our next two meetings left of the year is the planning board will be on the 20th and the zoning board is going to be on the 27th. Both meetings are held right here. Both are going to be at 7 o'clock. Please come out. The planning board, there's quite a few interesting applications that have been coming through our, uh, our, app, our uh, agendas. Uh, come out and see what this town is about and what's coming down the pike. That's all I have. Hey, thank you. Uh, the only thing I have, the EDC meeting uh, for November was canceled. Uh, there was a lot of people that had personal things to handle. And the Downtown Alliance is moving forward, so we should be hearing different things on the redevelopment and what they could do to entice Main Street to bring in more businesses. Um, that's all I have. Mr. President. 
Yes. Yeah, I just forgot one thing I, I wanted to bring up. We should thank uh, TV35 Sal. As you can tell, the audio in the room is much improved. The cameras are back working. He spent a lot of time with our vendor today. Everything is straightened out. And uh, being a volunteer, I wanted to thank him for job well done. Thank you, Sal. Job well done. Okay. Um, hearing nothing else, uh, I'd like to, at this time to open up the meeting to public comment. You have 10 minutes to speak. Please come up, say your name, address. First call. Yes, hello, good evening. Um, Sylvia Zosher, the superintendent of schools in South River Public School District, 15 Montgomery Street, South River. Thank you. Um, I want to begin actually by um, thanking Councilman Oliveira, who was in attendance today at our college fair. Um, thank you for your support, your coordination with our guidance department, and it really was a great event, so thank you for that. But I'm coming to you today to talk about uh, our school district's upcoming referendum. Our district's business administrator and some of our board members are here as well. I'm sure you as elected leaders of our borough are interested in this referendum as it centers around the children of South River. And in fact, in October, I met with Mayor Krenzel and with Councilman Oliveira uh, to review the referendum details. We went over plans uh, for the projects. We shared financial information and we discussed our efforts to get this um, information out to the public. The referendum is made up of two questions. Question one is the building of a new early childhood center to house our full day free and grant funded pre-K program. Question one also includes a complete renovation to our stadium, including new handicap accessible stands, bathrooms, and a press box. Question two is contingent on passing question one and is for a turf multi-sport field. I have been asked why the stadium and the Early Childhood Center are on one question, but we believe that both of these projects are equally important for very different reasons and for different populations of our students. We simply could not choose one to name question one and one to name question two. They are equally important and therefore are together on the same question. There are many educational and research-based benefits to full-day pre-K. And anyone, educator or not, can certainly see that adding two years of schooling can only improve academic opportunities for the children in the short and the long term. But what is specifically important in South River is that our district receives a 1.6 million yearly grant in order to hold this pre-K program. This grant funds all of the staff, the resources, the technology, the building maintenance. But with 10 classrooms already housed at the primary school, two at our Head Start location in South Amboy, we are completely out of space at our schools, but we still have a wait list to get into this program. Some naysayers have said uh, we don't need pre-K, just give the grant funding back. We really don't see how we could possibly give up this opportunity for the children of South River and see this funding go to children in a different town, in a different community. It just doesn't make sense when we can have this benefit and this support for our own children. And then there's the stadium. If you have been to the stadium, you know that it is absolutely at the end of its lifespan. In fact, engineers who conduct a yearly inspection have cited that with repairs that were just conducted this past summer, the stadium could really remain safely open for another two seasons. We just finished one. And then it really should be demolished for safety reasons. In regards to the turf, we have heard many opinions about turf versus grass. But the fact is that as a grass field, we can only accommodate one sport. While as a turf field, we could expand that usage to boys and girls soccer, and in the future, field hockey or lacrosse. Our field remains one of six left in the entire county that is still grass. And as a result, our athletes practice on grass, but then they're expected to play on turf while away and without really having an opportunity to practice or learn how to safely play on it. Our coaches and players agree that turf will provide a much better opportunity for our student athletes. We've been asked why this election is taking place on January 24th and why it didn't take place in November. It came to our attention late summer, early fall, that the School Development Authority, known as the SDA, was going to release funding opportunities and an application process for funding. We therefore waited we did not put the question on the ballot because we were hopeful 
that we could maybe receive some funding through the SDA and lower the cost of these projects. We have yet to receive more information, but now feel we are obligated to forge ahead before the project becomes even more expensive. We've been asked why we are building a new school instead of using an existing space in town. At this time, there is no existing place in town that we could purchase or lease that meets the actual requirements for square footage, uh, et cetera, for pre-K. Additionally, the Board of Ed owns the land and the site that we are looking to build on. Using our existing property is the most cost-effective approach. It's that simple. We have been asked why we build another school in an area that can already feel congested. The pre-K schedule does differ from the other schools and we don't anticipate additional traffic because of this school. The plans include a parking lot for this new building, but also the addition of 14 parking spots in our current lot, the one adjacent to the high school and the board office. We also feel that any minor inconvenience is actually worth it if it actually means two years of additional schooling for our children and services and an education. It's been said uh, that we were offered funding or a donation toward the stadium from a former alumni, but we turned down this offer. That is completely false. In fact, I, as a superintendent, have no legal authority to accept or decline a donation. But even without that fact, there just wasn't an offer made, and we certainly would be open to such. In regards to the cost for taxpayers, we happen to be at an optimal time. The bond for the primary school ends in 2025, just in time for the opening of this new school. The stadium would be ready to open fall of 2024. The average tax-based home value in South River is $291,589. That really is just the tax assessment, not what you would put your home on the market for. I want to be clear about that. For this home, the monthly tax increase for both questions one, that would be the early learning center, the stadium, and question two, the turf field, would be $12.42 per month. That's essentially what we're asking for from the average home. All of the information for our referendum is found on the front page of our district website. Additionally, we have several upcoming information sessions. The next one is actually tomorrow. It's via Zoom at 10.30. After that, we have two in January, on January 11. Uh, one is at 1 p.m. at our public library, and the other one is at 6.30 at the elementary school. I hope that was under 10 minutes. Yes, it was. <laughs> Just so. All right, um, I'll take any questions or comments from the council as well. Mm -hmm. Nothing? Okay. She actually answered most of my questions. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public on first call, second call? <coughs> Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Maggie Georges for 30 Era Um I hope you are all doing well. Um, it seems my emails aren't going through, so I thought I'd come up and show up. Um, I, uh, to quickly summarize, I presented a case to the council in July 2022, kindly requesting for mom to keep her chickens. The chickens have made a 180 degree change in her life, providing her with mental, emotional support, happiness, physical activity. I was recommended to file a variance to the zoning board. We took those steps, and on Tuesday, November 22nd, the zoning board dismissed the application. We received a citation immediately during the Thanksgiving lovely holiday. There are two points here I'm, I'm, I'm here to discuss. One, I would like to, I, I want to discuss how the, the zoning bo board uh, processed the application. And two, I want to discuss the term livestock. One, the zoning board dismissed the application due to lack of proof of acknowledgement for the 26 addresses. And we are certain, we are certain that we provided the proof for the 26 addresses. Seven signed on a, on a legal acknowledgement and 19 letters were sent. Those postal cards were given to, to the township, certain. Chairman Bo Bodak informed us that he uh, would send us the missing information and nothing was sent slash received. He informed us on the 22nd. I told him, I'm certain, we were, we, I was sitting here about two weeks ago, I'm certain that the 26 addresses were given. And he was sitting and he told me, we'll send you the missing addresses tomorrow. This was on Tuesday. I was expecting on Wednesday, I did not receive anything. The township um, secretary 
aka to us, the town, who provide us all the information about this process, provided us inaccurate information about the, uh, the paper posting, and overall has been inconsistent. She has been our only source of information. She informed us to, pu publish, to publish the posting, the, the newspaper posting for the variants, although it was not, so I contacted the newspaper, okay? I told them, hey, I wanna post this. They told me, oh, it's, you're not 10 days before the, the date that you're supposed to, uh, that you're supposed to present to the zoning. I was like, oh, I had no idea. It's supposed to be 10 days. I thought you just have to submit the proof with the documents, because she told me that everything has to be received by November 14th. So nothing in the, any of the South River documents says it has to be published 10 days in advance. So when I called her back, I was like, hey, Julie, the sec town south secretary, this is what the newspaper told us. Is this correct? She's like, oh, yeah, that is correct, but just post it. It's fine. Just post it and send it to me. I was like, are you sure? I don't want to waste money. Can we delay this? She's like, yeah, just post it. It will be fine. My mom was on the call. I have proof that I called South River, and then I, I followed up with the newspaper to send it right away. Okay, she clearly said it would be fine, so that, that was incorrect. And then previously, in email, she told us, hey, I did not receive payment for this form. I did not receive it. But it turns out, but luckily we had the receipt. Had the receipt, and then we were able to tell her, no, we have the receipt, here it is. And she's like, oh, I misplaced it. So clearly, she has a problem with misplacing documentation. I requested, um, the, I requested the email addresses to the chairman to follow up on the supposed information missing that Chairman Bo Bodak told me he was gonna send it. The zoning secretary informed me she cannot provide his email address and that I must send a postal co uh, notice to him on recommendation of the attorney. Honestly, this was really surprising. I can send any emails to anyone, <laughs> even the President of the United States, but I can't send an email to the, the chairman asking pretty much just to follow up on the documents that he told me he was gonna send me, the addresses that were missing. My mother was penalized for mistakes of the township. I am still in shock by the way that the application was dismissed when we did everything, and the township, the person that's working, and that is our representative, clearly provided incorrect information multiple times. And I have email evidence, and I have proof of the postal cards, and I have a copy of the acknowledgement sheet. So it was just unfair. It was just an unfair process. I could not believe what happened here two weeks ago. Two, I want to discuss the South River Ordinance. The South River Ordinance says does not allow keeping of livestock. The United States Department of Agriculture, USDA, defines livestock as any animals raised to be used as food or for labor in an agriculture setting. Chickens are pol uh, pol poultry. They are not being used, ra they are not being raised to use as food. My, these chickens are my mom's pets. Thus, they are not livestock. That same phrase, livestock, was used on the citation sent to her immediately after the 22nd. The 22nd was a Tuesday. Wednesday, most people had half days and were going away for their Thanksgiving break. Immediately. It was sent, oh my God. Sorry, I, I just, um, I, I don't know what just happened to my email, phone. Um, so that was, I'm so sorry, just. So they are not being, I'm sorry, they are not being, so that there's, I believe they're, they are, cl the, the, they are clearly just being used for the purpose of, uh, they, are, they are not being used for the purpose of food, but rather to serve as a companion and friends to my mom. It seems that there is an understanding from the township why my mom has these chickens. They are not livestock. They are her pets. I was extremely transparent in July, and I said pros and cons, including noise was an issue. Yes, I was very transparent. I know. And I want to note that at the time, the chickens had some noise, and I thought it was just normal. But it turns out only the males, the roosters, are the ones that really make the noise, which you cannot identify until they are mature. Now, these chickens were, now the rooster, there was a rooster, and we, did not, we, we didn't do anything because there was an application in process. We really didn't, we were like, okay, there's an application, we'll see what happens, okay? It turns out that the noise was an issue, and that's completely understanding, but no one ever communicated with us during this time. No one communicated it. She was just penalized. I, I, I would kindly would like a clear understanding of why my mom cannot keep her chickens when they are clearly not livestock. I want to tell you that there, this process cost my mom over $2,000. She has no income because she lost her business due to COVID. That is a lot of money. She would have not spent that money if she did not really love those chickens. Now, I believe that there's a conflict here going on. I have interesting neighbors who have interesting connections who are saying things that seem alerting to the town representative. I know the term of quality of life was repeated by neighbors with all due respect. No one should abuse such terminologies in the hopes to get their ways. Because quality of life that's only been impacted is my mother. I will continue to advocate for my mom to keep the chickens because that is the least I can do. And I know they have made a big impact in her life. It is my hope that the law, of course, if, 
I'm not saying that she's keeping the chickens. We might, right now we are in the process of looking for families to adopt the chickens because the township said to immediately move them. But these are chickens. She's not going to go slaughter them, guys. Like, this is, like, that was also an unreasonable request. Like, she loves these chickens. She's going to go look for health, good families to keep these chickens. Like, how is that fair to her? And immediately to receive a citation, when she did the process of filing a variance, it was like, it was predetermined before we even went to that session that it was decided. It was just an unfair process. Now, she found the family to adopt a rooster, and there's absolutely no noise, and they're kept in clean condition. Now, I know that this seems like, again, very small in the in grand scheme of things. Of course, this is nothing compared to the funding of preschools into the new school, but this is still a big deal. It is my hopes that the South River laws become progressive to reflect the tension of mental health and acknowledgement of other types of animals. And I want to, again, emphasize, these chickens are not livestock. They are not being used for food. Even the byproduct of the eggs, she donates to families because her true enjoyment are those chickens. Like, I, I, this should have never been pushed over to the zoning board. It is so unfortunate how this was processed. It was just, I, I could not get over how in two weeks ago, how the zoning board was so rough when the, the town representative truly gave us false information and we are happy to provide that, but no one has responded to us in two weeks. I've sent four or five emails. I've called the mayor at least three times a day and nothing, nothing from this town. <sighs> like, we have been here since 2006. Like, we are good neighbors. We are good people. Like, this is, this is nothing. This is a blimp in the grand scheme of things. Why can't this, why can't I get an acknowledgement? <sighs> anyway, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I'm sorry to take up your time. And I appreciate you for allowing me to speak today. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Artie, can, can you follow, follow up? up? Oh, well, one thing, just for the municipal council, you do not have the authority to no. do no. anything right. that has to do with the zoning board. Exactly. So no decision you could make here today could do anything for whatever decision was just made. So I, I just need to make well, that clear before we start really... I'm sorry? She can voice her opinion. That's what she, yes, that's, yeah. that's why she right. can voice her opinion. She can, but, but we don't have the authority, authority to act. Right. We but, cannot usurp okay. the clear legal authority of the zoning board. Correct. But right. I guess my question, we can ask her to look into, you know, the misinformation that was alleged received or that's... That, that, is, that is in the discretion of the zoning board. The zoning board is a separate legal public... So we can't... We're that hands are tied. Be, that is under the guise of the zoning board. Okay. So then I would ask that the, the, the ordinance... Uh, the ordinance says livestock cannot be kept. The, these chickens are not livestock. They are not livestock. So uh, can there be a, a new definition amended or something that can be included to allow chickens for mental support without, of course, a nuisance of the, right now they are really in a quiet condition. You're welcome to come any time of the day. The rooster has been donated to another family. His name was Sunday. It was really devastating to my mom. But <laughs> it was... You can come and see, it's clean, everything is quiet. There's absolutely no reason for her not to keep the chickens. So I kindly ask that you please review, the, like consider amending or adding something in the, in, the, in the ordinance. These are not livestock, absolutely not livestock. So that, I know that, that is something that you may please consider and I hope you do consider truly this time. Beca and I, if, if I have a question, who, who can I speak to with, about the zoning board when I can't get a response from them, I can't get an email address, what can I do with the zoning board? That is, I mean, you could reach out to the chairman, but other than that, but I, I don't have I'm his sorry, email. I can't, I can't give you legal advice. Yeah. Uh, no, there's no, uh, I completely. Separate public entity. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. I, I don't mean to ask for legal advice. I just mean like a contact information. Like You have been told that if you would like to send something to him, send it through his secretary of the board. Yeah, that there's a lot of misplacement with the secretary of the board, clearly. Okay. Well, that's that all concerned. we can do, really. We can't do anything else. All right. Thank you. All right. else from the public? First call? Second call? <laughs> Good evening. Jim Hutchison, 38 Virginia Street. Good evening, Council President and Council. Um, first off, uh, Councilman Drzinski, thank you very much for talking about the Office on Aging. I believe at this point in time the December monthly mingle is booked. Is booked. Um, however, I'm sure they have a waiting list, so if anybody still wants to sign up uh, for the, uh, over the REMR, <coughs> they can add to the waiting list. I also want to congratulate uh, what we talked about, uh, the library personnel of 49 years. 
Uh, that's a major years of service achievement. Congratulations, and certainly to the fire department personnel, uh, congratulations on their years of service and their volunteer efforts. They save lives, that's great. You build lives in the library, they save lives. That's wonderful. Um, I also wanna thank the uh, South River Police Department uh, for their swift action. I came up to a few meetings ago when we had the tragedy um, where one of our South River residents, <coughs> uh, Janina Klitsch, was uh, killed in a motor vehicle accident actually at the corner of my property at Virginia and Darrow Street. Uh, when I came up to that meeting, we stressed that we wanted to see some action as far as stop signs, speed bumps, illuminated stop signs, etc. And I'm happy to say that the very next morning, late morning, I was driving the bus, came around from John Street, made a right turn onto Virginia Street after fully stopping <laughs> on Darrow Street, actually Darrow Street. And I was extremely pleased to see our... DPW director, a uh, member of our South River Police Department, and our own Bruce Koch over here actually out doing measurements. Uh, and there was action immediately the very next morning. So I want to congratulate Lieutenant McKenna and everybody associated with the action that has already taken place. Um, I know the police department was out there, uh, and I know their steps that they're going to do, but <laughs> I was really happy. At it may be saddened too, about a week later, within about a half an hour, there was four people pulled over and I don't know if they were issued citations or whatever, but uh, uh, the bubbles were flying that night on the top of the cars and uh, people that were not obeying the laws uh, were told they weren't, which is, again, thank you very much. I really appreciate the incredibly prompt service there and the, the prompt response. Uh, the last uh, topic, and uh, Mr. B.A., I, I know you're, you're waiting to get some results from the outage uh, reports and so forth. I just wanted to, to talk about this a little bit. Um, I know years ago when I sat behind the, uh, the wall here, uh, we did some major work uh, on the lines coming in. Right now we are fed with two separate uh, feeder systems. Uh, in other words, we have two lines that come in, uh, two three-phase banks that come in. One comes in uh, basically from... Uh, Milltown Road onto Hillside directly then into the substation and the other one which we I think we rerouted that uh, comes down Cam actually it starts out on Arthur Street comes down Cam and then comes down Willett and enters the substation um, I believe that line itself not only did we change some things <coughs> but we put it at the highest point of the poles so that it eliminated some possible uh, faults and so forth uh, associated with that the way the system was designed, from my understanding, is our, our normal feed uh, that provides borough electric service uh, coming from PSE&G, if that fails, then there's a switching mechanism that the second group of uh, three-phase service is activated. So we have redundancy in our system, a backup system. And quite frankly, for about the past maybe four to five years, up until 2022, I don't think we had any outages. I think we had 100% service. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I was out of town, I don't know. Maybe it was a blip here and there. But we do have that redundancy built into the system. Unless we have a major outage, when I say outage, like the entire East Coast is down, like a blackout condition where it's just everything, everybody's down. We have the <coughs> capability, and we've built in that capability where if one of those feeds fails the other can carry the borough so we have redundancy we have that backup system I don't know what's happened why when the one goes down the other does not get activated there should be a switch directly over to that and why that switch is opening I don't know and I'm sure that's what the re people are looking at as far as the reporting capabilities um, in my 40 plus years of utility service whether it was on the electric or water side and dealing on customer service issues when somebody would call in for a high bill complaint. The first questions you ask them are, have you changed anything? Have you added any appliances? Is there anything new? Like, did you change out a toilet because there was a leak? Did you add some electrical appliances? Whatever happens to be, which caused the high bill. Well, in this case, I'm saying, did we do anything different? And we have. We have the battery 
farm down there now. And there had to be some tie-ins with that into the substation. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if there is anything there, but if I'm a betting man, which I'm not, and I sit down and say, if there's been four years of non-outages, and this year we activated the battery farm, and now all of a sudden we've had four outages this year, I think it's a pretty good chance that it points to some sort of an issue with that battery farm. Again, that's my personal feeling based on absolutely zero knowledge of, of how anything is tied in down there. But I think that's what it is. I really do. Because there's something that's causing that secondary line to trip immediately when the first line trips. That should not happen. That should not happen. So um, I'm, I'm concerned that PSENG is providing some, you know, some sort of Q&A on this <coughs> report because unless I'm wrong, PSENG is only going to go to the point where they hand off their service or their responsibilities to South River. And then it becomes, I guess it would be um, high energy as the people associated with, you know, doing our substation maintenance and so forth. This is where Tommy Toto, or Tommy Noto, excuse me, Tommy Noto's got to be looking down from heaven saying, it's right there, can't you see it? Tommy, we miss you, pal. Man, he was brilliant. And, and Tommy would know. He would know. I know after the, probably the first outage, he would know. So um, we certainly miss his service and just miss him as an individual. He was a, he was a brilliant man. Um, so again, just my opinion. We did a lot of work years ago. Bless you. Thank you. And we cleared the lines. And I drove those lines into East Brunswick. There's nothing in the way. So whatever faults are happening that are causing the outages, something's wrong. Something is set up wrong, or there's some sort of condition that's overriding that switch that allows that secondary line or that secondary bank to kick on to keep the borough active. Again, the redundancy is there. We should not be facing system-wide or borough-wide outages. Either one of those banks can carry the entire borough. I don't understand why. But again, uh, I appreciate uh, that we're, we're waiting for the reports, and I would very much, uh, I'm, I'm very anxious to hear what they are, what the results are, because just as a sidelight, picking up people on the bus and driving them around, some of the people that were extremely concerned were those that were will at Manor. They have electric heat. So when it's down, they don't have generation down there for electric heat. Common areas, lights and so forth, they do. But if it's a long extended time period, the seniors down there get cold very quickly. And I'll be concerned about that, along with everybody else in the borough. Um, again, I'd be interested in, in seeing what happens, and uh, uh, I hope that report comes out soon. Okay? I do appreciate also Mr. Gindy, Mr. Drzinski, and also the mayor uh, did respond to uh, some of my questions and texts and so forth. So uh, I appreciate that because I was a little bit of a pain asking what was going on. Oh, okay. People on the bus were saying, why is our power out? And I said, Monday night I'll ask some questions. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and just one final thing. Richard, uh, Governor Murphy's on the phone. He wants to know why you're giving the state crap. Um, <laughs> but uh, in case I don't come back up uh, between now and then, everybody, Merry Christmas, all the best in New Year. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah. Anyone else from the public? Good evening, uh, Charlie Craddeville. I'm the Central Jersey organizer at Food and Water Watch, and I'm here representing our 73,000 members around New Jersey to speak about an urgent environmental justice issue. I do have uh, a few things to share with you. May I approach? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. So I am here. Because you may know there's a plan to build a large gas-fired power plant just five miles from here. And I wanted to start by thanking your Environmental Commission for inviting me to speak about this issue uh, this summer. And I also wanted to uh, thank your clerk for letting me know about tonight's meeting and, and thank you all for your time tonight. I'll be as brief as possible and um, we'll be asking you to take a stand on this matter. Um, these plans are being pushed by a company called Competitive Power Ventures, 
They are foreign owned and uh, want to build another power plant right next to the one they opened in 2016. This is in the Caseby section of Woodbridge on the Raritan River waterfront. And uh, I do have straight from their air permit application the emissions that they are proposing. Just wanted to caution you, there's a couple reasons to be against the power plant. Obviously, uh, we are in the middle of a climate crisis. We need to change uh, you know, how we are getting our energy. And one thing that we can do, the sort of bare minimum, is not build new fossil fuel infrastructure in this year, 2022. Um, but this plan would uh, lead to the emissions of millions of tons of greenhouse gases every single year that would make climate change even worse, lead to more extreme weather. And the other emissions that you ought to be concerned about are things that are harmful to human health. So I'm talking about carbon monoxide, ammonia, nitrogen oxides, particulate matter, um, sulfuric acid. These are things straight from their air permit application, this company wants permission to pollute. They want permission to put this into the air, and it's not insignificant amounts. You can see I've uh, you know, assembled the existing permitted emissions plus what they're asking for the second power plant, and then the totals here. So you can see the totals are, uh, you know, if approved, they would get permission to emit up to 402 tons per year of carbon monoxide, uh, which is poisonous. Uh, ammonia, 252 tons a year. Uh, nitrogen oxides, or NOx, that would be up to 297 <laughs> tons per year. And particulate matter, this one's really important, would be uh, 223 tons per year. And of that, the vast majority, 214.3 tons, would be particulate matter 2.5, PM 2.5, which is uh, means it's smaller than 2.5 microns. The particles are that small. What that means is they can <coughs> travel hundreds of miles. And also, when we breathe them in, they embed themselves deep inside your lungs and stay with you for the rest of your life. And um, you know, children growing up today that breathe in that particulate matter are going to be uh, finding it harder to breathe as they get older. Um, we also see uh, volatile organic compounds would be up to 83.3 tons. VOCs, volatile organic compounds, combine with NOx to create ground level ozone, which we all know commonly as smog. And I'll note that Middlesex County already has an F rating for ground level ozone from the American Lung Association. They issue a report every year and consistently Middlesex gets an F for ground level ozone. This would make it even worse. And so when we have those uh, hot summer days, uh, when sometimes your phone might give you an alert to warn you that, uh, you know, there's an air quality problem today. If you're a vulnerable person, if you have a respiratory illness, you might find it hard to breathe and you'll want to stay inside. We will have more of those days if we have more smog, and we will have more smog if we have more NOx and more VOCs emitted here in our county. And on those hot summer days, it will be bad. Um, so we're uh, here today to ask for the council to take a stand against this dirty project. Uh, you would be joining a number of communities that have chosen to take a stand. I'll note that the Edison Township Council was the first to oppose this. It's been a little over a year since then, but in the year since then, we've had Highland Park, Hoboken, Perth Amboy, Franklin, Sayreville, Rawway, and the county commissioners of Somerset County all pass resolutions opposing this. And we're not asking you to do this just for show or just for um, you know, making a stand. We're asking you to do this because it will have an impact on the ultimate decision that DEP makes. Uh, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection has the power to approve or deny this air permit. And Governor Murphy and his DEP will get that final say. But they do care what you think as uh, local leaders. And we have shown in the past with, uh, for example, a, a gas power plant that was proposed for Hudson County, North Bergen. Uh, that project was pulled after 52 municipalities voiced their concern. And, you know, people sitting in the chairs that you're sitting in 
took a stand against it. So we are asking your council to please look into this and please place on your next agenda a resolution that would uh, come out against this dirty project in the interest of protecting the health of your residents and our environment, our air quality. And uh, I do have a copy of our model resolution, the latest version that uh, is customized for South River. Good afternoon. Yeah. Actually, yeah. there's enough for everybody oh, okay. there. So please do. Yeah. I'll, Thank uh, you. If you want to peruse that. And, and we, we are asking, because there is some urgency here, that you place this on your next agenda so we could get this done before the end of the year. Uh, I'll note that you know your environmental commission did hear me out, and I really appreciated that. They swiftly acted. They took a vote to oppose this project and recommend that you all oppose the project. I already gave you the letter from them dated September the 12th. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm here to help. I would uh, uh, make myself available to any questions you may have. And uh, my only regret is that I haven't been here sooner. I know I was corresponding with the clerk back in October, but I'm glad I was able to make it here tonight and make it in the building to speak to you. And if you have any questions at all, anything that I can help you uh, to understand this better, we encourage you to do the research because we think when you do, you'll come to the same conclusion we did, that this is bad for your residents, and we hope you'll take action against it. Great. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay. Anyone else from the public on first call? Richard Byrne, again, no, love one this place. Um, so just, uh, we hand, I hand-delivered the, the letter after we did that meeting. And I just I find it, it's going to be the height of irony if the same NJDEP, which is in final adoption on rules to outlaw electric boilers, which is going to vast, or outlaw fuel-burning boilers in favor of electric boilers, which is going to vastly increase the demand for electricity, approves a fuel-burning plant to, to supply that electricity. So, yes, uh, it, that's that. Um, so, uh, not Environmental Commission first. Uh, the cannabis ordinance, um, so you're, you fixed a, a, a problem in it, that's fine. Um, we're a year in in New Jersey, and there are 20 uh, retailers um, currently <coughs> operating in New Jersey. The closest one's in Woodbridge. And if you recall, I came to the meeting last year when you adopted the zoning ordinance that out, uh, did not permit retailers about my plan that put it at the north end. You could zone the ordinance so that the only place it could go. I, I think there's still an opportunity uh, for it to bring a high quality operator in. And, you know, there, there's sort of this like big hole on the map of the, the operators for retail that we're sitting right in the middle of. So I, I, I think economically and um, both practically that it's worth looking at again, so uh, on that. Um, with respect to the electrical uh, system, you know, I personally I don't think the, elect the, the battery system was the problem here because the battery system is only activated during peak usage, right? So it's like it's disconnected <coughs> almost all the time, except when we, we have the peak average. No? All right. Not sure. Maybe. Oh, no. In any event, uh, so now I'm on the Environmental Commission business. Um, with the tree fund ordinance, in, or the tree fund uh, section in the zoning ordinance, uh, we got a quote and we put a purchase order in to, to buy two trees. These are two, uh, they are three inch caliber Princeton American elm trees, which we're looking at for the street side of the Washington um, Blue Acres lots to hopefully obstruct cars from getting in there. People try to park their cars in these lots all the time. So trees are great because they look good on the street. But the problem I have is we got, the quote was $1,000 for two trees. And, you know, if we look at the Phillip Street project that was just approved by the planning board, we got 250 trees required to be replaced, and at $50, that's $12,500. And so with the intent of the law is to replace 250 trees, but we were only getting money to replace 25. So um, I leave it to your, <coughs> it's your purview to 
uh, set these amounts, but um, the, the $50 amount is, isn't in, in. Richard, if I may, this, so I have your changes to the ordinance. We are looking into it, and I believe it'll either be on the agenda session or for first reading come well, January. Uh, th that was the technical problems in it. That, well, I, that, I left the well, fee, I, and if, if, well, if you're considering. You, didn't you the, provide a fee structure mm -hmm. in it, in what you that's, provided me? That, no, that's the same fees that were already adopted, but fixing. Can can we talk like, offline? Two fifty, yeah. uh, because because I thought you provided a si a sliding scale. Can we the, talk off talk sure, offline so sure. I can figure out what you provided but, because that is on um, on the purview for for the new year. Okay, um, so, uh, but, so we uh, are looking at it, but I guess we need to talk too because I need to I think I need to understand more of what where you're coming from, um, and then we can hopefully get something moving in January. But now I have numbers in hand that show the $50 is, is not what, what we need. Understood. Um, so uh, that was the first item. The second item is our, our planning board is currently operating on the master plan revisions. And as a result of our master plan re-examination report, and uh, we were, at our meeting we discussed the waterfront redevelopment zone. And in the proposed changes includes reforestation and environmental restoration in the uh, waterfront redevelopment zone. And I mentioned that at our environmental commission meeting and a great cheer went up in the meeting like that's, the, so the environmental commission wholeheartedly approves of that change to the WR zone in the master plan. Um, Oh, so and, and with respect to the school, um, the new school, uh, I actually read the U.S. Census reports from the um, Census Bureau, and according to the 2020 Census, we have three census districts in South River, 68, 69, and 70. And in District 70, for the first time, 15.7% of the people, and that's the south end of town, uh, are living in poverty, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. And in 68 and 69, it's just under 15%. So, you know, full-time preschool, uh, you know, the New Jersey Constitution requires <coughs> a thorough and complete education, and, uh, you know, people starting out at a disadvantage, they are here in South River. You wouldn't think we have this nice little suburban town, but we, we do have um, a a measure of, of poverty here. And uh, a preschool is, you know, the path out of this. It's the first step in the path out of this. So I, I, I'm going to vote for the, uh, the, the school bond issue. And uh, I urge everybody else to as well, uh, just on, on that alone. So, all right, thank you. Good, thank you. Anyone else from the public? First call, second call, third call. Motion, Motion to close. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So carried. Okay, moving on with the agenda. There's no mayoral appointments. Uh, we have our consent resolutions. Whereas resolution 2022-01 authorizes the borough council to utilize a consent agenda to adopt various resolutions of a routine and non-controversial nature at one time. Now therefore be it and is hereby resolved that the below listed resolutions are hereby adopted by the borough council in whole as if the same were individually acted upon. Consent resolutions 2022-300 to 2022-317. 300 authorizing the cancellation of all balances less than $10. Three, 01, authorizing no annual pay cost adjustments for 2023. 302, resolution canceling federal and state grant receivables and appropriation reserve balances. 303, authorizing the renewal of cleaning services and DPW functions and utility maintenance contracts. 304, authorizing purchases and emergency repairs through state contracts. 305, release of a performance bond. 306, authorizing a stipend for the implementation of the Fix-It Repair Program. 307, agreement with the Superior Officers Association. 308, authorizing the requisition of funds for payment to the custodian of school monies. 309, authorizing the execution of a contract of sale for a property located at Block 152, Lot 16. 
310, resolution authorizing certain utility refunds. 311, rescinding resolution 2022-291 for a person-to-person -person transfer. 312, appointment of 2022-23 winter recreation department employees. 313, award contract to Allied Construction Group Incorporated for the water treatment plant filter backwash piping modification in the amount of 397,250. 314, appointment of substitute crossing guard. 315, accepting November 10, 2022 and November 14, 2022 special, regular, and executive session minutes. 316, authorizing the bills and claims list. And 317, resolution setting the date for the election of fire department officers for the year 2023. Motion to move consent resolutions. Second. Yeah. So motion by Councilman Gindy, second by Councilwoman Ballas. Uh, roll call. Councilman Ballas. Yes. Councilman Gindy. Yes, with abstention to 316. Councilman Kurchensky. Yes. Councilman Mira. Yes. Councilman Oliveira. Yes. Council President Siula. Yes, with the abstention of 316, following numbers 22 02633, 02653, 02889, Okay, moving on. New business, there is none. Governing body comments. We'll start, start, we start this time. Okay. This time. Thank you. Uh, as you heard earlier today, uh, the Board of Education and the superintendent, Dr. Zercher, came up and explained the referendum. I encourage you to go see the Board of Education meeting, which is going to be held on December 19th. If you have any questions, please voice your opinion. This is a very important referendum. Um, Mr. Byrne, at the last council meeting, we did speak about the trees and places to put them up. I had the opportunity to speak to Blue Acres for an interesting uh, 45 minutes, and they encourage putting up trees at, on their sites. So wherever you're looking to do, I could always give you a list. I would need to know where you're gonna put them up because I have to inform them of what you're doing. The food bank, I had the opportunity to help uh, serve 150 dinners uh, along with the fire department and the staff from the food bank. It was a great event. Um, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people were happy to, you know, see that we had warm dinners waiting for them. The tree lighting this Friday at 6.30 right down here at the uh, War Memorial. Uh, I should say the old museum. Please come out. Uh, this is going to be a great event. And most of all, it is getting cold. Please check up on your seniors, the most important. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman um, Ballas. As has been said tonight, there are many ways to contribute this Christmas locally to families that need, uh, organizations that need. In any way, you can help, little or small. I'm sure it will be greatly appreciated. So if you can do whatever you do, uh, it, it would, I'm sure it would be greatly appreciated. Um, to the Pop Warner cheerleaders, good luck. Have a safe trip. Give them a yell for all of us if you can. <laughs> and I, I wish them well. And to our first responders, thank you for your continual work to service this town. And I know now that winter's here, it'll get busier. But everybody <coughs> always does such a tremendous job. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Oliveira. All right, as Councilman Gindy said, it's starting to get colder outside. Um, if you have a sprinkler system, please make sure you uh, be careful. Uh, we are, at my house personally, uh, I think one of our pipes already burst from the cold, which is uh, unfortunate. So again, please be on the lookout for that. Stay warm. Friday, uh, really excited to have the tree lighting ceremony. The event is rain or shine. Um, so again, please be out there. And once again, thank you to the uh, fire department for always providing service of uh, having Santa come to the event. So I know it's uh, children really enjoy it and I can't thank you guys enough. And once again, Pop Warner, good luck. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot of fun um, and make it well, you guys already made us proud by going down there and, and doing everything. We look forward to having everyone 
bring back a national championship. So that's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Wachinski. Thank you, Council President. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank the police for their presence, especially throughout the community, slowing everyone down. Our fire department, our DPW, and Robert Wood Johnson. Our DPW especially for a lot of the leave cleanup and everything that they've done. And um, I've asked the residents to, you know, take heed if you happen to be by a storm sewer to keep it clear of the leaves if at all possible. Um, and with that, I uh, know Wednesday, everyone is still going to probably be working and everything too, but uh, uh, the American Legion and the VFW is planning to have a ceremony at 9 o'clock in the morning where we place a wreath upon the waters of uh, our community in remembrance of uh, Pearl Harbor. Um, with that, it's at 9 a.m. If anyone can attend, we'd be grateful to see you there. And if not, we understand that you're working and everything too, so just... Keep it in your heart that uh, it's a day that we shouldn't forget. With that, I thank you, Mayor, and I hope everyone has a good holiday. Thank you. Okay. Thank Councilwoman you. Mayor. Thank you, Council President. Uh, before I get into my council comments, I did want to ask, since we didn't do this in agenda session, the first reading for 2022-39, I just want to clarify what are the changes and who put up this ordinance? Council. Which one? I'm trying to look at which. That's a sale. 2022. Yeah. Oh, I'm. I put up 40. Are Are you? Wait. Are we doing the sale? sale? I'm sorry. I meant the 2022-40. Um, the boards and commissions and authorities. That's the one. I put that up. Okay. And what are we changing in the? So the rec advisory board. What we're doing after speaking to the members, we had a lot of trouble having quorum for our meetings. So what we decided to do was drop the number to six members and having the rec director and the rec coordinator actually run the meetings, take the minutes. So we essentially got rid of the positions and essentially made them a actual advisory board. So this way we'll have always quorum. Um, you know, we dropped the number from nine to six um, and then we were able to get everything going. So the biggest concern that we faced as an advisory board was no one really had time to create agendas, no one had time to take minutes. So now we're just putting that responsibility onto the rec department and they're gonna be assuming that responsibility. Okay, I just wanted clarification on that, thank you. No problem. Uh, I wanna thank Mr. Byrne for always giving us the good information on the Shade Tree Commission. He's been a wonderful chair this year. I want to remind this council up here, every single one of you, that last year you all changed the ordinance to $50 per tree. And the issue is, as we keep eliminating our trees and we complain about, um, you know, our sewer increase or, and rain runoff, flooding, and we can't replace a tree without... 600 close to 600 dollars that is our fault you all sat up here last year you all voted yes on it mm -hmm. so please take into consideration that that is not benefiting benefiting the borough it might be benefiting someone but it's not the borough we need to look more into the future i hope you all take in consideration all of the detailed points that mr byrne brings up um and look to see that we keep the budget that you gave us this year because we will be spending it on trees and trying to improve our quality of life here in town. So thank you, Mr. Byrne, and I hope you continue to be our chair for next year if the mayor appoints you. Um, I ask if we can please uh, request once again from the zoning board, the annual report of all of the stuff that they get. Uh, we as a council should be reviewing that annually. I don't recall getting it last year. Uh, if we could please request that, uh, Mr. Lundensky, just so we can see what type of changes and ordinances that we do need to, because uh, as you know, the zoning board has to approve or deny things that we could be changing or modifying where people don't have to um, go to that board. Uh, 
what else? I want to thank everybody who volunteered for the Thanksgiving dinner with the food bank. It was once again um, more people this year than it's been in the previous years, which goes to show that a lot of people are still in need. Uh, thank you to the Riamar for the food at, that they donate, along with Carlos Santos, who I like to express every year. He donates um, quietly. Most of the time his family doesn't even know he donates, um, so it's much appreciated, and he always thinks of South River, even though he doesn't live here anymore. And my condolences to his family, as he did lose his mother um, this past month. Uh, this week we're going down to Florida. Thank you for all the well wishes. I think all of our girls are more excited to get down to the warm weather and be in Orlando and Universal. Um, but they are very excited to perform, which will be on Thursday. So by Thursday night we'll know what we have. But um, they're happy just to be there. They are going against a lot of teams. Um, and hopefully we're just looking to maybe make the top five. So that's our goal for this year, but thank you. Uh, there are some new businesses in town and some are even growing and moving into larger locations. So I'm just reminding everybody to shop local. Um, there was a little petite boutique that opened up recently. Um, a lot of our cosmetic uh, small businesses are growing um, and just support our local businesses because if you remember they do end up always supporting whether it be to our sports teams to our recreation department with our children to our PTAs with donations for fundraisers so it's always good to give back to them as well and with the World Cup happening I just want to remind everybody a lot of our local businesses are opening early to watch the soccer games as well so you could always support that way because it is Nice to see our diversity here in town and enjoy um, rooting for other teams. I know USA is gone. I know I might be biased because I'm rooting for my team tomorrow, but um, good luck for the World Cup, and I hope everybody's enjoying something out of the ordinary because usually the World Cup is in the summertime, but this year it's in November and December. Uh, other than that, I just want to say for everybody to stay warm. It is cold. Um, and we'll see you before the holidays. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a couple things. Um, again, good luck to the cheerleaders. Hopefully we come back on top. Um, again, as Chief Smith said, uh, fire department had a dinner for their 50 year members. We had five members that reached 50 years and we had two members that reached 25 years. So you're talking 300 years of service just with those few people. Imagine what the rest of the department has too. So again, congratulations to them. Um, again, with the trees and the heat and everything going on in the homes, make sure you check your smoke detectors and your CO detectors. Make sure the batteries are all good and everything's in proper working order. And again, just have a safe holiday season. Thank you. Is there anything else to come for the council? Hearing none, next meeting is scheduled for December the 19th, seven o'clock in the building police station here and motion to adjourn, motion to adjourn. second motion by councilman ballas second by <coughs> councilman guinea to adjourn all in favor aye so adjourned Thank you.